point as well afterwards. With that said, we're going to go ahead and start the recording. Welcome. Today we'll be discussing unpacking the new features and benefits of Microsoft XDR. With that, I'd like to make the theme today, why now? Why is now a good time to review Sentinel plus XDR? If you stay with us, I'm sure you will be able to answer that question for you by the end of today's office hours. <clears throat> so with that, today we have Karsten Dew. Karsten has been with in the industry for nearly 30 years, and he's worked with Microsoft products since 1994. He was part of enabling cloud services in the late 90s with an ASP in Norway before he moved to the U.S. in early 2000. In 2006, Karsten joined Planet Technologies as a consultant and has worn several hats serving customers all over the U.S., he spent the last decade around Microsoft Cloud offerings with an emphasis on teaching customers the cloud platform along with ongoing projects. Most recently, Karsten has been doing many of our Microsoft XDR and Sentinel workshops as part of the Already Own It program. And in April, he presented on Copilot for Security for our office hours that month. So check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Thanks, Karsten, for joining us on the program today. And we've got a full agenda, so let's go ahead and get started. Our agenda today consists of an overview of what Microsoft XDR is and what's changed. As I mentioned, the theme today is why now? We will be going over that with what's changed, what's new, and then we'll get into Microsoft versus legacy SIEM and XDR solutions, why it makes sense to use a Microsoft solution. We'll talk about getting logs into Sentinel. Uh, we'll talk about data management, um, what Sentinel can do for your endpoint management, and then getting started, and then finally moving from another seam. What, is it, what does it look like to get started there? And of course, we'll save time at the end for questions and feedback, so feel free to put those questions in the chat window uh, while we're going through the program today. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Karsten to get us started. Karsten, thanks and welcome for joining us on the program today. All right, thank you, Ken. Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to talk about Microsoft XDR and Sentinel. Um, so let's start with the XDR definition. So it's extended detection and response is often abbreviated as XDR. And it's a security incident platform that's using both AI and automation. XDR provides organization with an efficient way to protect against and respond to even complex attacks. Um, as you see also here on the visual here, XDR takes on a broader view <clears throat> and unifies security across endpoints, cloud computing, email and collaboration systems, and any other systems or solutions connected. We want to uh, start with um, the protection. Um, so protection in the XDR environment from the Microsoft perspective is enabling the defenders. I'm not going <clears> to <throat> uh, spend a lot of time talking about Defender for Cloud, but I do want to talk about Defender for Cloud. It's one of my soapbox products. I often speak up for Defender for Cloud for uh, organizations using uh, workloads in Azure. Um, it should be um, enabled. It's a recommended solution, and it includes a very long list of security, control, governance, and compliance capabilities um, at your fingertips inside of Azure. Um, the Defender for Cloud pricing is pretty straightforward. Um, you'll find it in the portal. You can also find it in the enterprise calculator. One example, a server in Azure Commercial. Um, the cost for the protection, um, its inventory, its uh, vulnerability, posture, and scanning is around $15 a server a month. Um, the list of uh, what can be protected with Defender for Cloud is growing. Um, and if you're using Azure standalone, in other words, without Microsoft 365, um, it actually serves as a mini theme. Right? It has um, capabilities. It correlates events. It, um, it will let you work with incidents. Um, and it has some capabilities for hunting and remediation in, in Defender for Cloud. So if you aren't using Defender for Cloud, um, you should definitely uh, consider uh, consider 
enabling that. It's a strong recommendation from Planet. And um, once enabled, um, if you are using Microsoft 365 and you go towards Sentinel, you connect Defender for Cloud into Sentinel using something called a connector. XTR <clears throat> means that we're looking at everything. Um, we're looking at telemetry across the tenancy. So tenancy in, in this presentation means your Microsoft tenant with Office 365, Microsoft 365, and Azure all operating, all enabled. Um, and there are defenders for identity, endpoints, apps, cloud apps, IoT, and of course, email um, and documentation or collaboration. You can go to the next slide, Ken. So from a uh, capability perspective, the extended detection and response, again, next the art, <laughs> um, it provides the analysts and the hunters with certain capabilities. And these are the capabilities that we want to achieve. Now, traditionally, we have seen these capabilities built by using almost like a Lego system with a plethora of applications or solutions pieced together, some integrated, some not, to cover the needs of a, of a SOC analyst or a security analyst. Um, there's often a seam involved, um, and the seam will, will have raw data um, that, it, that it will uh, collect. And very often, the, the legacy seam means that we have thousands or hundreds or millions of records um, that we have to um, filter through. Go to the next slide, Ken. <clears throat> so this slide is going to build, so you can go next. Um, and again, the uh, from a security operations perspective, um, you will see that the raw data is now expanded here with sources of this data. And why this is important is that we want to kind of break the um, legacy understanding or the old time <laughs> recommendation of not putting all your eggs in one basket. I think Microsoft has um, earned the right to break that uh, analogy um, because now with all the telemetry connected through Defender XDR and integrated into the seam, uh, you see the app integration under the classic seam there, um, now we are getting a large amount of telemetry covering a very wide or broad um, portion of your uh, environment. If you are uh, protecting your endpoints with Defender for Endpoint, you're protecting your identity with identi Defender for Identity, um, leveraging Entra ID protection, you have a very solid um, collection of telemetry that your seam now can um, utilize and analyze. Uh, I think you can advance on this slide, Ken. You can keep going, Elsa, tell you what to stop. There you go. So with, with Sentinel on top of XDR, we get um, the ability uh, to look at all the telemetry. You see um, at the bottom left corner of the Microsoft Sentinel box, there is a security data lake mentioned. So this is your internal security telemetry data collection in, in for your tenancy. Well, Microsoft have direct access to that and you can see it. It utilizes machine learning and, and artificial intelligence and it learns from uh, your posture. It's also being trained across tenants across the globe. Uh, so that certain behavior, certain detection capability is updated on the back end by Microsoft. Once you get all your XDR telemetry sources connected, you want to certainly turn on what's called UEBA, behavior analytics. Um, this is one of the stronger abilities of detection systems uh, where 
it will use machine learning in your tenant. It will learn how users are normally logging on or moving between networks. And if it sees something that is uh, abnormal or new, it will actually alert about it. Um, at core, not called out here, um, for a lot of the security posture that Microsoft is driving towards with their cybersecurity efforts is conditional access. Um, and con conditional access is also another part of driving the value for the signaling also for UEBA. I'm going to mention real quick, uh, Microsoft have an offering called Expert Exist Assistance or the Microsoft uh, Security Experts. It's a service that you can sign up for, uh, you can subscribe to, and you get access to real personnel with Microsoft whose job is being analysts and, and hunters and mitigators. Um, it, yeah, you can move on from this slide. You can. Oh, and the other oh thing is there's the, one more. The yeah. yeah, let's talk about yeah. that. <laughs> so we covered Security Copilot in another presentation. Um, Security Copilot is the late, latest addition of capabilities uh, that is added to the XDR um, collection of tools. It is um, a AI, uh, so to, to compare it to something that a lot of people know, it's the Microsoft Security Chat GPT. Uh, we can use the Security Copilot um, to query for security incidents. We can um, have it assist in hunting. Um, me personally, I worked with the security Microsoft products uh, for a long time. Hunting is what I don't get to practice a lot. Uh, so when I saw Security Copilot, the first thing I did with it was to go hunting. And it can uh, certainly assist in hunting. It can propose techniques. It can explain some of the more complex scenarios. And at the end of it, you can tell it to write an executive summary and send to send up the chain for a report of whatever incident you were you were hunting around. Um, Security Copilot has access; it's configurable, of course, um, to all your security telemetry sources, including Sentinel. So that means that you can use this um, AI LLM model to query across everything that is connected that it that it has visibility to. So for example, uh, if there is something um, troubleshooting or hunting going on around Defender for Endpoint, the security copilot can help dig into that and uh, filter out the noise and, and help you get to the true meat of what you're looking for. Next. A question. Um, there was a question about when uh, ex security experts assistance is available in GCC High. Obviously, it's not yet. Um, do you know? Have you heard anything about when it possibly would be, Carson, or not yet? I didn't know that there is a uh, distinction there. Um, so I think what we'll do, we'll look into that and we'll and look let, into it. Sure. Okay. Let thanks. the community know. Yeah. All right. So it's um, uh, XDR and Sentinel. There is there is so much new uh, material coming up. I took uh, these these new items here um, are since May of this year. Uh, we start with XDR integration with Defender for Cloud. <clears throat> so we can have Microsoft Defender for Cloud and now integrated into Defender XDR. So in other words, uh, security.microsoft.com, for example. Uh, we'll now see Defender for Cloud alerts and or incidents. Um, and let me see here. <clears throat> the bidirectionality is enabled across um, Defender, um, the, the security.microsoft.com, which is the Defender for uh, Defender portal, the old Defender portal. So we now have visibility into both Sentinel incidents, but also Defender for Cloud incidents. The security exposure management uh, was in, it is in uh, public preview. 
um, it helps sh showcase attack surfaces. Uh, it helps showcase uh, risks and it will analyze your configuration and give suggestions for what configuration exposes what surfaces. The agentless malware detection uh, for Azure and AWS and GCP and virtual machines is agentless malware detection and it was available in May. The advanced hunting enhancement, um, we are supporting also hunting for uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, so um, you will see in the XDR portal that vulnerabilities um, are now a part of the enrichment of events and or incidents. The last one in XDR, um, there's a new tag. Um, it's um, quite important. You, know, you can tag something as a critical asset, which really helps um, refining incidents and, and alert queues. You can prioritize, of course, as, as a result. Uh, so for Sentinel, one of the main new uh, additions there is the threat indicator. Uh, you can now search threat indicators. Uh, it's been exposed. You can see it both in the uh, XDR portal and in Sentinel, um, where Microsoft's threat intelligence data is, is freely available. To use threat intelligence, I don't know if we agreed on talking about this somewhere else, Ken, uh, but to use threat intelligence in a automated or an enriching fashion, for example, by enriching incidents with threat intelligence data automatically, there is a licensing fee. Uh, but uh, having the threat data and threat indicators available is free, and you can search them and use them directly from the portals. The SOC optimization, uh, it's a uh, wizard that helps uh, propose recommendations around your SOC. It helps telling you um, what data you should collect if you are uh, collecting data that is uh, less valuable. Um, and it's a good collection of recommendations. Incident and entity triggers are playbooks in Sentinel um, to allow incidents and, and entity and our events trigger automation events in, in uh, Sentinel. The auxiliary logs uh, is a new type of logs uh, that allows for a new tiering uh, for high volume data. Uh, it could be network, proxy, firewall log. Um, and it's in probably uh, proposed uh, because the original model uh, drove cost uh, because of the high volume of these logs. So the unified security operations platform is not now um, combining Sentinel, XDR, and Copilot for security, as I talked about. Uh, see migration tool. Uh, there is a new tool out there that helps automate migration um, from, for example, Splunk or other themes into Sentinel. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the migration at the end of this presentation. Some other new um, options for Sentinel is the AWS and GCP data connectors for government clouds. That's been uh, uh, missing out and we've been waiting for that and it's finally available. And then uh, Google Cloud PubSub integration, uh, we can now integrate with Google Security Command Center. The incident task, it's a incident management system inside of Sentinel. Um, it's also fairly new, um, allows uh, operators to manage the incidents uh, in a better way than uh, than previously. We, so in the chat window, there's a little bit of conversation going on. So in the future, if we could try to possibly put, you know, where these things are showing up, are they in commercial, are they in GCC, GCC high? Um, I don't know. Typically, if they say GA, um, that's typically released to commercial. But uh, do you have any thoughts on that is, uh, specifically? Um, Carson, as far as some of these being available in GCC or GCC High? 
I would say that most of these are not available in um, yeah. in GCC government yet. Yeah. Maybe yeah. with the exception of the um, AWS and GCP data connector. Gotcha. That's guys. I can. I can. Uh, I can enrich this presentation before we send it out with where this is available. That Fantastic. would probably be helpful. Excellent. Thanks for the feedback, folks. All right, let's move on to, uh, so this is reason number one why there's always innovation going on with Microsoft XDR and Sentinel and lots of great things, especially with the Defender for the Cloud alerts and incidents now coming into the um, the pane of glass there. That's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about legacy tooling. Uh, Carson, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> so this goes back to the story um, or the, the statement I made about having your eggs in, in one basket. Um, as you see here, endpoint detection and response, so the EDR, Defender for Endpoint, um, it has a long list of competitors, CrowdStrike, Falcon, and so forth and so on. Um, my story here and my recommendation has been for a while uh, that the Microsoft tools um, covers uh, the need for the security in its silo. So for cloud security, Defender for Cloud, for Seam using Sentinel, for XDR, uh, of course, we have the multiple layers uh, covered by all the uh, defenders for the various services like identity, endpoint email, application and cloud, uh, but also identity. Uh, so what was previously also a necessity having all these tools to to stitch things together and, and get a view across your enterprise. Um, I want to say that um, Microsoft is providing that. Given that you are uh, using a Microsoft tenant that uh, with or without Azure, but also with Azure, um, but expanded with Azure, you now have the ability of also connecting your on-prem workloads using uh, Defender for Cloud you can easily um, pull in resources from from your server uh, environment in, in your enterprise. Not to leave out the ability of monitoring and, and protecting workloads in GCP and AWS. So um, the, the top five, this list, this list is, uh, is much longer. Uh, this is for the presentation that we just kept these five. Um, capabilities of the Microsoft cybersecurity offerings. So in your opinion, what's the true benefit of Microsoft doing this in-house with XDR portal? Um, I think there's there's the two benefits that is on top of my mind always is that these tools are all Microsoft experts. Um, <laughs> in other words, they're optimized for the Microsoft products that they are protecting, right? Yep. Um, and you can argue that Microsoft has no business protecting Linux systems, but um, guess what? They do that um, just as good as anyone else. The other, uh, the other reason, uh, and this is why I'm quick to tell people to take a look at Sentinel and, and see what Sentinel can do for you. Um, the, the number one design criteria for Sentinel was to help Microsoft internally manage their insanely large volume of events. So Sentinel's number one function in my mind is its ability to correlate and classify events, multiple events, even thousands and millions of events into a single incident. Yeah, that's so, huge. Yeah, so if I have something going on, an attack going on, I have a large enterprise with you know endpoints being attacked, I get a single incident telling me about this. Um, and you know, from a time perspective, from a SOC analyst, that is invaluable. Absolutely. And then once you can start trusting uh, Sentinel as far as how it correlates those uh, events into incidents, like for small SOC shops or small shops that are, you know, have a compromised device at 3.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning, you know, that can be done automatically, take that compromised device offline for a very small charge for automation, right, Karsten? Yep, correct. Awesome. Um, yeah, no, so that, that's uh, the, the little tidbit there about the cost there. So Sentinel, gen generally, um, you, you are charged by ingestion of telemetry. 
um, but also there are some smaller charges under the hood. Uh, if you're running a logic app that executes based on a finding, there there is a um, small charge for that. We're talking about cents. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk that. about that on another slide. So let's save yep. a little bit of that conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's go to this next lovely slide, which we have a link to it. So don't feel like you have to write this down. <laughs> Yeah, we have a link to this at the very end of the presentation, and you'll have access to this PowerPoint. Go ahead, Carson. Yeah, now this uh, we included this slide um, for, for a couple of reasons. Um, first, it kind of substantiates what we just talked about for Microsoft's coverage. Um, they have very good coverage of their tenancy. We have very good coverage of our on-premise environment. We have the ability of connecting. Uh, data sources, log sources um, across your enterprise. Uh, so you can take this cybersecurity architecture and really um, expand your security risk compliance boundaries to also include your, your on-prem environment. Um, the second reason to have that included here um, is kind of to show this link here. We're going to make sure that link is highlighted. I think it's in highlighted later. Yeah. In, yeah. Yeah, but I have it at the very this, end of that yeah. link section. Yeah. So this this one slide here is a part of a large collection that Microsoft has available for everyone um, that you certainly want to check out. And this is just one of maybe 60 slides in that collection. Uh, Excellent. Yep. Yeah. OK, we'll move on. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> So, let's, so how does this, um, how, Carson, how does this ahead. play into a single pane of glass, I guess? So that's a um, single pane of glass. Um, I, I just mentioned one of my recommendations around the main reason to, to look at Sentinel, also compared to other scenes. Um, its ability to drive um, the correlation, its ability to yeah. let you look at or focus on what matters. Um, and with XDR, you you pull your entire environment into this purview of Sentinel. Um, so it becomes um, a area of focus, of course, that lets you focus. It helps you, uh, of course, collect. Um, that's one of the things that uh, Microsoft's been working very diligent, diligently on is the ability to collect from multiple sources. So I mentioned GCP, AWS, um, on-premise environments and, and services and, and devices. You'll see uh, connectors for Palo Alto, Cisco, you name it. Uh, so it's ready to connect your telemetry. Um, you can also in Sentinel be picky so we don't want to just dump everything in there just because we can, um, uh, of course, choose what data we want to keep. We can also transform data as it's being collected. Now, Sentinel um, is using AI, using machine learning. Um, it's also using uh, what's called analytic rules uh, that comes with your connectors that helps us detect across almost an endless amount of events. So I'm using the word scalable. Um, I've been learning about scalability. Uh, if you read about Sentinel, um, that it, so Sentinel is storing its data in log analytics. If you read about log analytics, Microsoft, uh, actually in some articles, they, they call this being an endlessly scalable uh, data store. Um, so until quite recently, we had seen customers collect about a terabyte of data uh, a day. Um, our latest customer is now collecting around three terabytes of data a day. Um, and we see no issues with that whatsoever. Now, of course, when you start using Sentinel for detection and investigation, you need to be mindful of the data set you're looking at. Um, if you if you do an open-ended query against a billion records, that's going to take some time. Uh, so that is the only thing. That doesn't go against scalability. That is just a direct result of your solution or the data set being very large. Excellent. 
That leads right into data collection. So let's talk yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. No, so I mentioned data collection. And this is uh, back to the security data lake I mentioned earlier. We want all the data to come in, and there is a uh, there is a security telemetry portion under um, all the services in the tenancy. So connecting them to Sentinel, uh, actually, this is a good list uh, because I can, in a single connector uh, in Sentinel, connect to most all of the items on the list in the black box, besides the two. Besides the second to top, the Sentinel Health uh, is a is an additional connector. Um, but these are also important data sources because they come with your uh, Microsoft 365 ten tenancy, right? Um, they are free uh, for ingestion for 30 days on a on a sliding window. So if you were to collect data and not have any retention beyond 30 days. There, there wouldn't be a telemetry cost, ingestion of telemetry from your Microsoft 365 environment. Uh, this is true for uh, commercial and gov uh, government platforms. It's just um, how it works. Um, of course, you wanna, um, in many cases, you are required to um, archive or keep or retain data for, for longer. And you have to remind me, Ken, did we talk more about the storage part? We got storage on the next slide, yep. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm not going to go deep into that um, on this slide. Thank you. Um, so centralization of data is key. Log analytics is where this ends up. And our ability to collect logs from various sources, um, of course, all the defenders, in, in Azure, all the, the PaaS, the VMs to PaaS, even the SaaS services in Azure, and, and diagnostics as needed, um, and MCAS, it, not to forget MCAS. Uh, Microsoft Cloud App Security um, can be used to collect firewall logs. And, and if you look at this from an XDR perspective, if I have endpoint protection and detection, I have identity uh, protection and uh, the telemetry. And I also now get firewall logs. Now Sentinel can really look at what is these devices doing? What is the user doing on the device? And correlate that with, with firewall logs. So it becomes a uh, very um, solid base of your telemetry. And as I also said earlier, the user entity behavior analytics uses this data uh, in determining what behavior is risky or abnormal. Network boundary logs, you can also get logs from edge devices and send that into Sentinel. Um, and Sentinel, of course, um, supports ASIM, log format, uh, the regular SIEM log format, it, the, the acronym escapes me. Uh, Syslog, of course. Um, so. Whatever, whatever solution, if, you, if you're if you using a SIEM solution right now and you're collecting logs, most of those logs can go directly to Sentinel without any uh, transformation or modification. So key takeaway here is black box, everything in there is free. Why not use it for 30 days? At least try it out, see what it's like. And then obviously we got to get into storage here as far as keeping it a little bit longer to get some more use out of it, right? Yeah. No, you're right. So. Um, this is quite a bit of a confusing uh, graphic here, but at the middle left, you see the log analytic workspace. Um, that is the data store of Sentinel. That's where you store, that's where you retain. Um, but you're not stuck with it. So log analytics uh, supports three, four uh, different types of data. Um, it's the auxiliary logs that I talked about, uh, and then it's also broken into the Sentinel data tiers. Um, so the first tier is analytics. Uh, analytics is your active log data that you use for security analytics. So 
uh, sign-in logs, uh, event logs from security, uh, for example, on the domain controller, um, defender for endpoint logs from a device, um, and so forth and so on, where basic logs are uh, more telemetry, uh, such as system logs from a Windows machine or diagnostic logs. Those are the basic logs. Now, analytic lo analytics logs are where we do our heavy lifting for querying. That's where the Sentinel is focusing its correlation. Um, and basic logs, what's special about them, you can't retain them. So they have a much lower price point, like they're, they're very cheap. Um, and they only live in Sentinel for either seven or eight days. I always confuse that. Now, the third tier um, is the archive tier. So this is one of my favorite tiers <laughs> uh, because it's inside of log analytics. You don't have to work with other storage uh, systems to archive your Sentinel data. And you can retain them for, I want to say, 12 years, 10 years uh, inside of the log analytics archive. Of course, at the lower cost, than the analytics um, tier itself. Um, the difference between these two tiers from search is that uh, I can search analytics, I can search basic, I can also search archive. Now, once I archive something, there's a small charge in the archive search. So that's something to, to be mindful of. So if you do a lot of data mining uh, against your active, um, active um, analytic logs, you might want to postpone archiving them a little bit. Uh, again, it, it's driven by the amount of query, the, the amount of access Thank to you. the data. Yeah. A um, couple other things. Uh, you can have a cold and a hot path storage. Uh, so we can put data, take data out of log analytics and, and store it in other fashions. Um, and we can also do data compression and transformation when we transport it out of uh, log analytics. All of this integrated with Azure cost management. Um, and of course, there is data purge capabilities. So that means we can either manually purge data, um, but most likely we want to use the retention settings and archiving settings to uh, automatically purge data after uh, time, time windows are expired. All right. So key takeaway here, actually, there's storage built right into Sentinel at different price points, depending on how long that content's going to be saved and how often you access it and so forth. So that's Correct. pretty cool. It's unlike other seams, right? Yep. All right. Let's talk about endpoints. And uh, for those who don't know, uh, Microsoft's XDR for endpoint, endpoint XDR solution got in the upper right quadrant of my of Gartner last year. So um, I have a link to that article at the very end as well. So it's available for you. Go ahead, Carson. Yep. Uh, so this is around endpoint security and management. Um, of course, we collect telemetry for uh, Defender for Endpoint. Um, this allows for centralized monitoring covering Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iOS devices. The incident response um, is based on all that uh, telemetry, and we can use both automation or playbooks to respond to incidents in near real time. The threat hunting, uh, we can use uh, or allow endpoint analyst to use the built-in threat hunting and threat intelligence. Uh, we can also use or view uh, according, uh, persistent threats. Uh, you know, I mentioned the threat intelligence. Uh, Mandiant, for example, is another uh, provider of threat intelligence that Microsoft is now um, delivering a comparable output into its built-in threat intelligence. Uh, UABA, as I mentioned before, it also includes the endpoint um, data and telemetry. So it's using Defender for Endpoint um, correlated with user identity um, and activities. Vulnerability management. 
um, there is a Microsoft Defender vulnerability management capability in security.microsoft.com uh, that allows us to identify vulnerabilities and show, you know, gaps in your patch levels or, or OS versions or software versions. We can customize detection rules. Uh, so we can have special environments. I talked to a college earlier today and they were very interested in that because they have things they do in the college that normal uh, EDR <laughs> systems doesn't like. So having the ability to have uh, to customize this uh, was uh, very interesting to them. The third party integration, I can certainly look at data from other endpoint security solutions like CrowdStrike, for example, uh, using the data connectors uh, that helps the endpoint security. Forensics and investigation, the alerts and notification um, is other honorable mentions here. Uh, so it's also compliance and reporting uh, to very strong capabilities of the end, endpoint management from Microsoft. So let's get started. How do you get started, uh, Carson? I'm keeping an eye on time, so I'm, I'm going to make this <laughs> quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, XDR and Sentinel. So again, as I assumed, we have a Microsoft tenancy. We want to use Sentinel. It means that you take a look at what is the expected um, uh, environment and data volumes. Um, and once you get a handle on that, if, if you need retention, we need to think about the, the volume time, you know, multiplies with your duration of retention. Uh, setting up a subscription in Azure, uh, because that's where Sentinel and Log Analytics will live. Um, then we go around and we connect our Microsoft 365 environment uh, with telemetry. And then we cannot, will not stop recommending <laughs> that customers have to include endpoint and identity signals. Especially recommendation there is the five tier licensing, so G5, A5, E5 licensing uh, for the enhanced capabilities. There is a hidden benefit there in the five um, tier that you get to what's called an Azure P2 level in, inside of Entra ID. Now you have identity protection available to you, which is an important aspect. Also looking at multi-tenancy, um, it's something to consider. Uh, some customers might have multiple tenants, you know, both in government and commercial. Might not be ideal, but it's something worth considering, especially for uh, for your placement of, of your C. The last slide is um, we can migrate to Microsoft Sentinel. Um, if you're migrating, that means that you have a scene. That means that we need to connect data sources. Most of your existing data sources can be directly connected to Sentinel. Uh, that be via syslog, via direct connectors, uh, via direct ingestion of AWS, GCP, other Azure systems, uh, or on-premise systems via AMA agent. We can um, collect all of that data into Sentinel. We want to certainly plan for log volumes, um, much more so for bandwidth than for Sentinel's capabilities of ingesting logs. Uh, we want to plan and um, uh, have a plan ready for the access to the data and also access to reports. We have a lot of reports. Many organizations have reports that are maybe tiered up uh, so that certain people can only see a, a, a small subset of data, like how many incidents per day, how long time to resolve, and stuff like that. Another big one in migration to Sentinel is to determine what to do with historical data. Uh, some of the customers migrating um, choose to store his historical data so they can export it if needed, uh, where other customers are looking to actually lift and shift data into Sentinel. Um, I don't have really a recommendation here. Uh, our largest customer did what I said first. They stored historical data into 
a data store that they have access to when needed and, and left it with that. And then the final, final uh, call out there for migration is reevaluate what you're collecting. Uh, we don't necessarily always need everything. So uh, a lot of times these um, SOC uh, SIEM systems have a tendency to collect too much data. Excellent. And, and uh, that yeah, is the end of migration to Sentinel. <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, looking at the poll from earlier today that we did at the very beginning, it looks like about half the people are already using Sentinel. And the other half are either are using third party seams or they're still evaluating. So the good news is that there hopefully we made some converts on this conversation today. We'll kind of summarize, you know, why you'd want to do this. Again, that's the theme today. Why why were you interested in moving to Microsoft XDR uh, and Sentinel together, together story? So um, we'll open it up to questions. Well, actually, I've got one last slide here, which um, is all about the resources we talked about. Uh, in June of this year, Forrester recognized Microsoft XD, Defender XDR as the, the broadest native XDR solution on the market with their recent additions of the Defender for the Cloud Data and Purview Insider Risk Management, considering that those are critical uh, for SOCs to access end-to-end -end data. Then uh, Gartner last year mentioned that uh, Microsoft Defender XDR was rated as the highest possible of 15 out of 22 evaluation criteria, including endpoint native detection, surface investigation, threat hunting, analyst experience, vision, and innovation. Um, so that, that's kind of uh, what the two first ones are. The third one is like, what does it take from a licensing perspective? We talked about the Defender products. So if you have any of those Defender products, typically in parts of G5 or all of G5, um, you're perfectly capable of starting to use the Defender XDR capabilities. Got some learn articles, and then finally that that really nice slide that art that <laughs> that cars we put up with the overall Microsoft cybersecurity reference architecture link is right there. Um, let's open it up to questions. Um, feel free to come off mute, raise your hand, put it in the chat window. Anything you want to do, um, we'll save a couple minutes here. We got plenty of time, so feel free to ask your questions. And uh, you know, Carson, feel free to turn off the recording if somebody doesn't want to be recorded right now. I'm not Carson. I'm sorry, Casey. Uh, so that uh, people feel free to ask their questions.